Here on the Colour of Country Life Flow FM, we're catching up with the Chair of Grain Growers Limited, Brett Hosking. Brett, how are you going today? Yeah, going well, thanks, Ricky. And uh, staying dry as, as well as you can, I imagine, even in the local area, a little bit of flood water coming through. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Look, I've got flood water just lapping at my toes at the moment. We're down on our levee banks, just uh, checking them and making sure everything's okay. And uh, we had the heavy rainfall. We had sort of 90 mil uh, two weeks ago in over the course of 24 hours, which was massive, um, yep. as you'd expect. And a lot of localised flooding coming out of that. Uh, we're also downstream of the of Charlton on the Avoca River, so the flooding impacts that were affecting the township of Charlton uh, on the weekend. Uh, have reached us sort of, oh, they reached us early Monday morning. And, um, yeah, we're just starting. It's just slowly rising on, on our flood courses and rivers here at the moment. Um, we're expecting we wouldn't be far off the, the peak of that water in the next day or two, maybe tomorrow or Friday. Yeah, we Aussies, we like to smile in the face of adversity and make a bit of a joke, but some serious challenges are not only for communities and flooding of homes and businesses, but for farmers, you're saying, when it comes to getting the crop off this year as well. Yeah, yeah, but I think uh, it's going to be a year for snatch strap sales, people. Gee, that's a tongue twist to try and say it quickly, but um, uh, yeah, I think they're going to do well this year because I, I think, uh, well, certainly, certainly throughout large parts of eastern Australia, with the, some of the rainfall they've seen, there are going to be uh, lingering um, repercussions, even if it stays dry now for the next, you know, month or two. Uh, there's still going to be those those wet crab holes and things like that where water's sat in paddocks, where it's run through paddocks that. Um, will have to be navigated and um, yeah I, I think maybe a tractor with a chain or a snap strap might be the order of the day for many growers. And I imagine uh, this is where the community side of things and your neighbourhood uh, friendly neighbour comes to the fore is that I imagine farmers are usually happy to scratch each other's backs to get each other out of a hole. Yeah yeah look absolutely um, you know it's that community spirit that uh, you know at our rural towns would be devastated without it because we can't rely on governments for help. Uh, you know, we, we are too far removed from the metropolitan capital, so we rely on each other, and um, and that works really well. You know, people band together. The early morning phone calls or text messages from um, different growers just checking in on each other is, um, you know, that's really important when times like this. And you're saying, uh, Grain Growers Limited, that uh, there's quite a sizable proportion of Australia's grain crop could be affected, I guess, what, in terms of whether whether it can be harvested or when, and also the quality of it? Yeah, look, absolutely. Um, you know, we're estimating in excess of 60 million tonnes of, of grain being produced in Australia again this year, for so the second year in a row, so... If, if nothing, our farmers are incredible in the face of adversity and what they can create out of, out of next to nothing. Um, and we, we sort of, I've, I've often been asked um, by government and media about, you know, what, where, where's the rain, you know, what impact will it have? Well, we reckon about 20 million tonnes of that crop would have been exposed to the weather over the past few few weeks, um, sort of in that, that area. That doesn't mean it's all damaged, um, and we hope and pray it's not, but, you know, it puts around about uh, 20 million tonnes of that um, could be exposed, and out of that 20 million tonnes, you know, hopefully we could get away with less than 5% uh, proper damage or loss, but uh, you know what, there's still rain on the forecast, so uh, we've got a little little journey to travel yet. Yeah, and I notice uh, the Victorian government soon after the flooding in uh, Rochester, as well as Shepparton, uh, Premier Andrews announced a, I think, $300 million plus package, including some infrastructure works to repair roads. Uh, I mean, even with a heavy harvest, the roads get a lot of potholes, but I imagine they're getting pretty badly banged up in your area as well. Yeah, look, they are, absolutely. We've, um, you know, I guess from my area to get freight to, to grain to Melbourne or, or to Geelong, uh, to where our ports are, is near impossible at the moment. Uh, the main supply chain sort of down through central Victoria, there's roads being washed away or badly or so badly damaged they're trying to keep uh, vehicles off them, um, which is the right thing to do, to be sure, but they need to be urgently repaired. Uh, you know, that that's our supply chain. Um, my kids went to Swan Hill on... Um, on Sunday morning, and couldn't buy any chicken at KFC. They'd run out of chicken. Oh, oh. I, I never thought we'd be calling in a defence force for an airdrop of Zingerberg, but we're pretty close. <laughs> call in the call in the army. Bring in the yeah. spicy chicken. <laughs> but, but, you know, these are the supply chain challenges we face when when you know floods like this happen. And um, you know, often you know, even sometimes in rural rural areas, but particularly in city areas, I think they're a little bit um, immune from just how important it is to keep that connection going, keep those roads open and what they mean. And, um, 
you know, it's, it's only events like this that remind us of how critical our supply chains are and sometimes how fragile they are. Speaking of staying connected, and I guess we're going to sound like a broken record here, you've talked about roads, but surely a rail network with good bridges that won't flood out is going to be the solution longer term for northwest Victoria, in fact, all over regional Australia to get freight um, off the roads, on the rail and still able to get to port. Oh, yeah, look, I, I, I love trains. I think I might be haunted by the ghost of Tim Fisher, but um, uh, look, I... I <laughs> You know, firmly believe in a, in a time when we're wanting to be more, you know, sensitive about our emissions, when we're wanting to do things more efficiently, when our roads are under stress and we want to, you know, make sure that, you know, the integrity of, their, of those roads is maintained. We want to make sure it's safe for passenger vehicles. Rail just makes so many, so much sense. It ticks the box in so many areas. And yet um, I think one of the challenges is for a government when it comes to election time, uh, Nobody votes for the government that's just going to maintain the rail network. Um, everybody wants a big announcement. So maybe as voters we need to rethink what we're asking of government and maybe as government they need to rethink what they're going to deliver for us. So. All right. Well, uh, some way from a federal election, but there is a state election in Victoria. We still hope with bated breath there might be something on the Murray Basin rail front, at least for northwestern Victoria or other parts of the state. Uh, Brett Hosking, the chair of Grain Growers Limited, thanks for joining us today on Flow. No, thanks for having us, Ricky, and stay safe, and um, hopefully uh, we get a bit of fine weather to get the crops up.